Right, and so we're now leaving the, uh, the city area, aren't we? Getting more into the Westminster area. Lloyds Bank Limited Law Courts branch, very fine. These are indeed law courts. Strangely enough, I'm just at that point in Great Expectations where um, Pip finds his way to Jagger's offices only to be told that, uh, having got up at the crack of dawn to get there, only to be told that uh, he's in court and would be along shortly. And in the meantime, he can take a, a tour of the sites of the city near the law courts and he could see, as he came out, he could see the, um, the, the uh, St Paul's Cathedral that we saw at the beginning of this little walk. And then he was walked along to the law courts um, where he was offered for 18 pence or something to see a certain judge in full swing as though it was some kind of entertainment foreshadowing of course courtroom t TV and everything, it's all there in Dickens 150 years previous um, and uh, so you could probably say that in all likelihood um, Pip during his first day in London in Great Expectations followed a route just like the one that we just followed or crossed over it or something how romantic so who dares say that the British are not expressive people yeah, old witch that's what this bit's called And this is all about ancient Egypt. Cleopatra's Needle is a popular name for the formidable ancient Egyptian obelisk gracing London Victoria's Embankment, gifted unto King from the ruler of Egypt in 1819. After an arduous journey by sea, the obelisk was finally erected in London in 1878. That's a long sea journey from 1819 to 1878. However, it is an object. Well, if you want to know what obelisks are for and how they channel Satanism look it up there are people that can deliver on that topic better than I can but uh, nothing very healthy spiritual healthy about having obelisks put all over the place now here is an interesting office that I've been in a few times in the past it was indeed the office of Accenture It was part of Arthur Anderson that became the consulting wing that broke off and then finally uh, Arthur Anderson proper went the journey. But after the division of Accenture and Arthur Anderson, Accenture stayed here. I'm not sure if they'd been here beforehand. Um, and uh, I seem to have spent some fine, very fine, if you don't want to lock the whole road with your strange behaviour tourist yeah it looks as though 180 the strand is now derelict practically nothing's in there by much you know just a, you know, an at sign and some other sign what's actually going on in it I don't know it seems to be not used. It's, a, it's an exhibition centre called Brutal now. So, uh, no more Accenture in there, it's just Brutal. But, those of you, if there's anybody watching that works for Accenture who remembers that, uh, that office when it was Accenture back in the day, instead of the mess that it seems to have been put into now, Please explain in the comments as to how that ever came about that you uh, um, managed to uh, 
pull out of that office and leave it in such dereliction. Why did you do that? Justify yourselves, explain yourselves please. The comment section is open, Accenture people, for you to justify yourselves. Um, and, uh, yeah, here we go. Modern Language Centre. People like Professor Helder, Thomas Hardy, they were King's students. This is Rory Bremner, well known to be a, a person who studied French and German at King's College London. So this is all part of King's College London that is part of the campus for languages. If you want to study languages uh, at university, by all means consider doing so. It's an interesting thing. This is the building that you'll probably come to to do it in. So and it's got all the names of people that have been graduates of this place who are now Professor Dame Nancy, Nancy Rothwell, neuroscientist, yeah? CBE Hanif Qureshi, yeah? all these very Lord Owen, among others, foreign secretary. And uh, Arthur C. Clarke. I haven't heard of all of the people that are, that are here. George Carey, Lord Carey of Clifton, Archbishop Tutu. Somebody's doing a, a demonstration of crisp, crispy cream donuts. So they are King's College London. The Most Reverend Desmond Tutu says, I have wonderful happy memories of my time at King's. King's College London. So if you want to come to London University, come to a place which has had a lot of well-known alumni, like Professor Morris Wilkins, a DNA pioneer. And you could do worse to pick King's College. I didn't go to King's College myself. I went to Cambridge. But uh, there's Lyle, the famous ge geologist. He was here. And John Keats, a poet. He was here as well. So there we have it. There's Guy Thomas. Or Thomas Guy, I should say, rather than Guy Thomas. Thomas Guy founded Guy's Hospital. It had nothing to do with Guy Fawkes. That was a different guy. But it was quite a popular name before the certain part of society came and changed the meaning of it and spoilt it for everybody. Now it kind of means dude. I don't know many people with the surname or first name Jude, other than Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy, who also was an alumnus of King's College, as we saw. So, like I say, turn the camera on, something will happen. That's the, one of the taglines of this channel, at least I hope it still is, after all of these changes that Google keep making, and probably will make quite a few more of by the time this even gets up, if indeed it's still worth putting up videos by the time I get to this point in the queue. I sometimes wonder, really. Hmm. Um. Anyway, here's the strand. So, let's all go down the strand, as the song says. Let's all go down to the strand and have a banana. The Lyceum. 
Theatre, which a lot of people have heard of. That's Theatre Land. Up that road there, one time I nearly ran into what's his face? That famous actor nearly knocked him over. Can't remember his name. The guy that's in everything. Yeah, it's gone. Really knocked the guy over. Is going up there just on that uh, it's a bit up there, going up there. Right, Maplin's is a shop I went into the other day. It's quite good. I got about 50 batteries for a fiver. I said, surely at this price they must be really useless. They must like be two minutes or something. And he said, well, you try and put them into one of your devices and you'll get a surprise, he said. So if I expected them to uh, last two minutes and he said I was going to get a surprise, I don't know which way um, I'm going to be surprised whether they're just going to last two seconds or last two hours or last two weeks. But he said I would be surprised by them. He didn't say whether it was going to be a pleasant surprise. But anyway, five pounds, I thought, well, he was a good salesman. Whew. So actually, this turns out to be quite good. I am actually maintaining my level of battery. It hasn't gone right the way down yet, which with the old battery, the one I had before, in fact newer than this one but more used it would have been no thanks um, Smolensky's Smolensk has some terrible associations for me you know um, so this way was called Fountain Court until 1883 from the Fountain Tavern which stood on this site. You know, at least there's a memory of it. Now it's called Savoy Buildings from the Savoy Fair that uh, used to be on that, that location. Ah, this could be useful. I'm going to go in there.